so welcome in everyone we're gonna put Turs in red uh we've got winner stays on week number three Turs versus Kapoch. it's the best of seven let's get the predictions in the chat guys either Kapoch or Turs. who do you think will win the set keep in mind Kapoch is the better player on paper also our champion but Turs has a massive advantage in the draft and he's also in his own right quite a decent player remember every single player that's playing in this is a top 100 caliber player and Turs from germany is a top player in both the 1v1 ladder and the team game ladder so quite a lot of experience there for him despite not being as big of a name as Kapoch. uh let's take a look at the first matchup here we've got Kapoch playing in the blue as the turks super interesting we've seen the turks in every single one of Kapoch's arena games either he has them or he's playing against them uh which is very interesting so he knows how to play with and against the turks it seems and he has won against the turks twice i believe um which is very cool now Kapoch has the turks himself okay so he beat the turks twice on arena now he's got them for himself uh on the other side we have turs playing as the burgundians which is to be honest a top tier arena sieve. so turks versus burgundians we have turs in red of course we'll also take a look at the map here arena i'm sure a lot of you guys know this it's a very standard map but for those who don't you start with some stone walls around your base so you're rather secure in your little arena hence the name in the middle of the map you have no hills completely flat ground we've got a lot of things to fight for you got tons of golds and stones scattered around you have five relics that people will contest and you have a lot of space and the reason i mention space is that space is very important in arena remember in the back of your base you have a decent amount of space but it runs out quickly as soon as you start going to like 100 pop 120 pop you start to really run out of space and you get crammed in so space is as much of an important resource as something like stone or gold could be on this map it obviously depends on the game what's more uh, crucial what's more important uh but they all definitely play a role taking a quick look now at each player's map we got turrets with a nice back gold a nice back stone and a ton of space at the back of this map to make for some nice farming area uh, he also has berries to the front which is not the end of the world and uh one secondary gold out here and then outside of his base he's also got uh he also has one secondary stone and one secondary gold so some resources where Kapoch can punish but overall i would say turs has a fantastic map and we see him with the early double bit axe playing as the burgundians i mean why not this is a perfect uh start uh perfect start in terms of a burgundian builder picking up the double bit axe in dark age to boost that wood economy uh over on the other side we have the turks for Kapoch. let's take a look at his map he's got the back gold which is very nice back berries uh also quite convenient uh but i see one big problem he's got both stones in the same spot now uh let's be real here if Kapoch is able to control this area he'll have no problem taking the stone nor this one However, in some cases, if Turs makes a push on this side, he could control both stones uh, at some point of the game. Probably won't play a big role, but it's something to keep in mind. Uh, Kapoch also has two stone, uh, two golds that are rather forward. So uh, I see four minerals on uh, this, uh, you know, on this screen, which uh, definitely is something that Kapoch has to at least take note of. So we'll keep an eye on that, see if that makes uh, any difference this game. But chances are, if Kapoch is the guy playing aggressive, he'll have no problem taking any of these resources anyways. Aside from that, guys, it is Arena, so we're going to have a pretty slow start in terms of, uh, you know, where the action will begin. Uh, which I usually felt like, you know, in, in the past, I feel like Arena is a little bit of a boring map because not much happens for the first 10 or 15 minutes. But honestly, as I got more experience with the game, I realized that a slow start often means for an explosive mid or late game. Um, so a slow start does not necessarily mean it's going to be a boring game, uh, which is definitely something um, uh, that potentially a lot of people might agree or disagree with, uh, depending on uh, your experience with Arena. Uh, we are seeing Turs going for the double lumber camp start here with the Burgundians. Now, the advantages of both civilizations are as follows. Burgundians probably have the better economy over the Turks. They also probably have uh, the better relic control strategy. If they do get the relics, the relics generate food and gold at the same time. Uh, and they get cheaper light cap tech. And on top of that, they get cheaper husbandry. Uh, so, you know, decent uh, bonuses combined with a nice economy. Uh, Turks, on the other hand, they get the light cap upgrade for free. So they also have a pretty good uh, light cap rush to control the relics. And we see Kabach running inside his base. Turs does not dare go inside. He decides to just back off and play it completely safe. 
Uh, which probably is a smart decision there. So as you can see, both civilizations have pretty nice bonuses as far as controlling the relics go. That's kind of what both players want to go for um, in general. Now, they don't have to do it, and they don't have to do it in the form of light cavalry as well. Like, for example, the Turks also have really nice unique units, the Janissary, which can be a great tool at controlling the relics. They also have a, the potential for a fast imp, which we won't see in this case, as Kapoch is up to the feudal age. So fast imp is basically off the cards because he went up a little bit too early for that. But as you can see, there's a few strategies that could definitely be viable. In this case, though, we are going to see Turris going for the light cab approach guaranteed here. Uh, barracks up at this point means that he's going to go up with a stable. And then the other building will be either a market or a blacksmith. What's really interesting on Arena is that you might consider like, okay, like th th just for the people watching at home, let's say you're watching this on the GL YouTube channel. Uh, and by the way, thank you so much for watching uh, on the GL YouTube channel. Uh, Game of Legion has helped me a ton behind the scenes to make this event a reality. And of course, on top of that, these sponsors, Stone Jaws, is just one viewer that's helped me set this up financially as well. So big shout out to both Gamer Legion and Stone Jaws for making this a reality. But if you're watching this on the GL YouTube channel, thank you very much. And, you know, just for your information, you might be thinking, okay, Arena, you start with Stone Walls. Why not just do nothing? Why not just go for a boom and you just go for pure economy because you're well defended with the Stone Walls? Now, the problem with doing that is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the space. If you do just four town centers right off the bat and you just go straight for economy, don't contest the relics, don't go for anything on the map. What's going to happen is the guy who goes for the relics will take all five relics, securing him a nice late game. And he could, he has the choice to go for a push with either a siege workshop or a castle forward. And those walls go down very fast. Like those walls against like siege or castle forward, they're going to last you like 30 seconds. And then one hole in the wall and you're completely wide open. And so this is why players don't often go for a pure boom. It doesn't mean it doesn't work guaranteed. The pure boom is a decent approach if you have a really good idea in mind. However, in most cases, players will want to contest the relic. That being said, it does appear like Kapoch with the market blacksmith is going for the boom approach. So we might see exactly what I've described, where he wants to go pure on the economy, give Turs the relics, and uh, just try to play for something later in the game. Turs will go ahead and pick up Heavy Plow now. Going to be boosting his farming economy quite nicely. Definitely cannot go wrong with Heavy Plow early. Remember, all of these upgrades, guys, are actually cheaper for the Burgundians. So not only do they get them an age earlier, they get them cheaper, which is very, very nice. It's like a nice double bonus there for the Burgundians. What I also really like about the Burgundians, I, I talked this up quite a bit, but it it's honestly a really strong civilization. Um, like the, the thing about the Burgundians, what feels really nice is that you get these techs early in Feudal. When you get to Castle Age, you don't need to buy anything. Uh, this is a really nice feeling. Obviously, you have the Imperial Age techs available, uh, but no one really gets those. They're just not that good. Uh, but what feels nice is that when you get to Castle Age, you don't need to buy anything. So you just focus all of your resources on like scouts, maybe a town center, monks. You focus on things that are more practical uh, and more impactful of the immediate game than something like an economy upgrade. So I feel like just picking up both upgrades gets them out of the way before Castle Age, and then you can just go for the game. Uh, like, you know, Light Cav, maybe a Monastery at some point. There it is. And you get to control the game quite nicely. Uh, let's take a look at what Kapoch is doing. He's about to hit up to Castle Age here. Uh, he's got a lot of resources. Oh, wait, what? Is this a fast imp from Kapoch? Oh my god, Kapoch is going for a fast imp. Wait, wait, wait. I completely disregarded the strategy because I saw him going up a little bit too early. And it is a little bit early for a fast imp. I, I wasn't entirely wrong on that. This is a bit of a fast build. But I think Kapoch is doing it to hide his intention. He went up at the same time you would normally see a Turk light cab rush. But instead, he's going to sell his stone and go for a fast imp. This has me absolutely hyped right now. This is ridiculous. Fast imp on game one from Kapoch against the Burgundian light cab rush. And look at this, Turs is playing into this completely. He has no idea Kapoch is going for the fast imp. He goes for a, a town center on the front. Normally, if you know it's a fast imp, you'd make the town center back here, maybe back here on the gold, because you're trying to buy yourself some time. Town center on the front will be the immediate target here. Super interesting. Kapoch is already up. This is ridiculous. He's going to get a sub 20 minute fast imp in a 
in a tournament game, basically. Like, Winter Stays On is not exactly a tournament, but that is a really fast imp. That might be the fastest imp I've ever seen, to be honest. Like, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if he's going to be able to afford the things he needs to afford right now. Let's take a look. Barracks comes down. Sub 20 is where you want to aim for with this fast imp, but he's like, this is a crazy one. This is a really, really nice time for Kapaj. And he's going to go for hand cannoneer here. And now the reason, let me explain to the viewers as well why fast imp with Turks is so strong. They get the chemistry upgrade for free. This is really important. It lets them make gunpowder right off the bat. They don't need to pay for chemistry and they don't need to wait the 100 seconds it takes to get the tech in. Uh, on top of that, Kapoch doesn't even need to make a university. So chemistry will come in for free instantly, which lets him make gunpowder. He's going to go for hand cannoneer and bombard cannon. Uh, and uh, this is why the Turk fast imp is so strong. You get Imperial Age units right off the bat. And uh, you don't even have to wait uh, for the upgrade to, com to come in. Kapoch could actually try to snag this relic. I don't think Turs will let this happen, especially since he knows about the monk. But Kapoch is eyeing it a little bit. If Kapoch can defend this relic... Maybe Kapoch taking one relic away from Turs is a nice, uh, decent advantage there for him. Uh, over on the other side, though, Turs now goes for the third uh, Town Center. He also picks up Hand Cart, so uh, plus 8k res for Turs. Uh, if you watch Spirit of the Law and you know that reference and you know what we're talking about here, Kapoch, of course, eco upgrades non-existent for him. He is really lacking on that department, but it makes sense. He's going for a big push. Imperial Age hits 1947. That's, that's a very fierce time for the fast imp. Very, very legit uptime there. Now we see the hand cannon near production. Two range hand cannon near. And uh, one siege workshop bombard cannon. Now, for me personally, when I do the fast imp, I, um, I like to go up a little bit later just to be able to afford more things. But in this case, in a tournament game, I feel like sometimes surprising the opponent is very, very interesting. And oh my god, good play from Kapoch. He actually converts back his hand cannoneer, snipes serves his monk, and picks up the relic. So decent advantage here for Kapoch. And you know, you don't expect to get a relic. Ooh, but Turs picks up the Hussar. Kapoch a little too close to the sun there. I mean, not the end of the world, but a Hussar swing is, is still decent, right? Now, here's the thing. Before we get started with the action, Turs did have a way to know the fast tempo was coming. He could have seen Kapoch's score drop, and he could have taken a look at the market, seen that Kapoch sold stone, and realized the fast tempo was coming. We have no way to know if he did any of those things, and he's well prepared. The answer, the typical answer, is to add in stables now and go for something like the Cavalier. And oh my god, picture perfect reaction. Turs is absolutely on theory here. Turs is absolutely on theory here. Goes for the Cavalier upgrade. Now Kapash is going to start breaking down this wall. The Cavalier is the correct response for the Burgundians. Remember, they get Cavalier in Castlage to their Knights. Uh, well, Cavalier will actually be very strong against the Hand Cannoneer. Uh, let's see if it's going to be enough, though, because here comes Kapoch with two cannons now and a decent amount of hand cannons. He's got 10 of those guys. And uh, to be honest, his economy at home is not bad. It's enough to sustain two range constant production, which is very respectable after a fast step. And remember, Turs has the economy advantage. 60 bills to 38. This is what Kapoch sees. Take a look at what he sees, because it's important. As a caster, we see everything. But as a player, you don't have all the information. He could start with the monastery. It's got four relics in. Of course, Kapoch knows he needs to go fast, which is why he's pushing, you know, rather quickly here. Turs needs to buy time. He's got more vills. He's got the relics. If he can just buy time, he should be fine. Kapoch goes immediately for the stable, actually. Interesting. Goes for the stable. He's also hitting this town center. Now, of course, Turs behind this is massing Cavalier. Kapoch does not know this, though, at the moment. I think he saw a Cavalier there. Hard to know if he actually spotted it or not. Bringing forward some more hand cannon here. And he's actually taking out the light cap from Turs. Turs is in trouble. He is dropping a lot of units here. Those five light caps down completely. The relics are out. And now the town center is the target. Kapoch is absolutely frying Turs' base right now with those bomber cannons. Absolutely insane game right now, but here comes the pushback from Turs. Three monks. Kapoch engages immediately, does not hesitate here. One conversion out of three monks. Two of them do go down, though. 
One town center is down. Curse has to abandon. He's got one more town center. Remember, if this goes down, all of this farmland is basically gone. Turz is farming at the back. He's desperately trying to set something up. Kapash has a monk himself. Turz is going for the engagement. The Cavalier are running through. Let's see. This is a huge engagement. The Hand Cannoneer are dealing with the Cavalier. Cavalier are swarming in. Does he go for the cannons first or the Hand Cannons? It looks like he's going for the Hand Cannons first. The Cavalier get a nice surround. Kapash is stuck in the mud. He has to take the fight. This can go either way, but it's looking like Turz has a nice enough surround. The hand cannons somehow slip out of the grasp of the Cavalier, but there's not enough of them. And the Cavalier clean up the entire push. Great reaction from Turz. Nutty, nutty cleanup there. And Kapach is sent all the way back. But I don't know if Kapach has a follow-up. It was looking good for Kapach, but Turz went absolute beast mode with the Cavalier here. Now he's up 30 bills. He's cleared up the push. Take back the relics, my brother. You've earned it. And he makes the TC back in the same spot as a sign of dominance to Kapach. And now Turz is going to go for the push. Turz has the Forward Siege Workshop. And he is looking to send some love back to Kapach here. Crazy play from Turz. Starting off the day so strong. I could not be more excited here. I could not be more excited with the host of the series. I mean, seriously. Kapach now goes for some weird follow-up here. He knows it's looking grim. But he goes for the Triple Monastery Monk Rush follow-up. One more push. He's got one more push before he caused the quit. Now, of course, the follow-up for the fast temp, you cannot add economy. You cannot add economy because you, you simply just don't have time. Like, it is too much of a gap. So you have to go for another push and see if you can make it happen. The problem is the second push will always be weaker than the first. Three mucks coming out. We've got 12 hand cannon here. I'm not going to lie, it's looking grim for Kapok. I give him like a 1% chance to make this happen. I give him a 1% chance. He needs to land every single conversion, and I think he needs some mistakes from Turz. But Turz, it doesn't look like he's going to make mistakes. He's actually adding in more stables. He's mining some stone. So he's planning to go for like a lot of Cavalier, plus maybe a forward castle or some, some nonsense like that. Forward castle can be kind of clutch. Turz actually walls it up. Interesting. Interesting. He wants to make sure he's fighting when he feels like fighting. He doesn't want to take a fight just because he's forced to do so. This is what Kapach sees. There's still a hole here. Coming in with five monks. Now, I gave Kapach a 1% chance. Now, this 1% chance, it, it really will have to come down to Turz running in there and getting mass converted. But Turz is actually playing it so smart. He's going to go ahead and pick off reinforcements. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't commit there. Whoa. I think he should have committed. He gives up two Cavalier for free there. I guess he is waiting for Devotion. Also clicks Imperial Age. Is that is that a little bit of a mistake there? Clicking Imperial Age? I mean, I, I guess you want to go up to Imperial Age. But at the same time, if you lose the fight, it could be kind of problematic here. Let's take a look. Turz is looking to engage. Remember, it is it is very big advantage for Turz right now. He's got more army. He's got more economy. Well, army is a little bit even. Like... It's hard to say if Turz has more army, but it's definitely even. But Turz has double the economy here. The problem is the army from Kapach is actually really strong. And remember, the hand cannoneers from Turks have 50 HP each, by the way. So they are quite, quite tanky. So Turz repaired the monastery just enough to put the relics back in. Uh, what's interesting here is that Kapach has no siege, by the way. This is so interesting. Kapach has zero siege, so he just has hand cannons and monks. You could take the relics if you want, I guess. I guess you could take all four relics and go back. I don't know if that's enough, though. I don't even know if Kapach dares go for that. He's going to use the hand cannon near to pick up some bills now. Remember, Turs does have devotion. Burgundians do not have heresy, by the way. You at most get the... You at most get devotion. But you could get faith as well. So you could the maximum you can get as far as anti monk is uh, is faith. In comes Turs, the big engagement. The cavern, there's so many of them. How many conversions will Kapach get here? Devotions in. He gets a few conversions, but he had like ten monks and only got three. So I'm not too impressed there. The hand cans are backed into a corner. Remember, they do massive damage, but I just think there's too many cavalier. This could be GG. It looks like Turs is getting the cleanup. Turs also has Imperial Age on the way. This is completely over, guys. It is an absolute wrap. Turs has Imperial Age, and Kapach has to call it here. 
to botch? There's no way he's trying. What? Kapach is a fighter. It's winnable. I give Kapach a 0.001% chance that Terrace throws this. He is up so much right now. He still has four relics. Kapach is so, so in it right now. The mindset is like no other, guys. The mindset is like no other. Paladin's coming in. Now, your average player, you get cleaned up once. Maybe 50% of people would resign. You get cleaned up a second time, I would say another 49% of people resign. But Kapach is in the last 1%. He gets cleaned up twice and he stands back up again on his feet. He will die as a fighter. He is not going to go down as the guy who got cleaned up twice. He's going to go down as the guy who got cleaned up twice and stood back up. He's going to clear the Siege Workshop. Kills the Magano. Now... I don't think any of this actually matters because uh, Turz just has so much res in the bank. Like, one siege workshop here, 200 wood, Mangonel, another 300 resources, not a big deal. Uh, he's at 92 bills. Uh, what I would like from Turz, though, is to pick up the relics again. I think the relics are huge. Maybe even put them to towards the back. Yeah, there we go. He's got a monastery at the back. Put them towards the back. Play it safe, just in case. You know, you don't want to throw a game like this. My mom told me she cheated on my dad, and I was angry, but then she told me it was with Hera, and I was really proud. This is the kind of message you'd love to hear from the Twitch chat. Thank you, Twitch chat, for pitching in to the event. Very nice. Paladin's coming in. 30 seconds. Burgundians do not have heresy, guys. They have faith at most. As far as I know, I could be wrong. could be wrong. Curse is coming in with a castle. More siege workshops as well. Why does Terz want a siege workshop? I guess he wants to bust into a Kapach's base. Paladin's in. Oh my god, run! Kapach, run! He's got the monks! There's 10 monks in here. He needs to get the miracle conversions. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think he needs to convert like 30 there, honestly. And I don't think this is going to be enough. The Paladin are swarming in. Paladin, they're tankier. They got more armor, more attack. They are just absolutely insane. Kapach goes for the Palisade Gates. No, it's open. Oh my god, I love you too, bro. But I don't love you as much as Kapach loves playing on when the game is over. Because my god, has this game been over for the past 20 minutes? And Kapach is sitting between a Palisade Gates and a Mining Camp with 10 Hand Cannoneers versus a guy who's fully boomed in Imp with Paladin. This is ridiculous. Turrets is breaking in. Kapach finally calls the GG here. What a game one we have on our hands. Turs, the underdog of the day, picks up game number one. Can I see a GG well played in the chat for our boy Turs? This is the first time in Winner's Days on History where the underdog scores game one. Love to see it. Turs is bringing in the heat. This is what I'm telling you guys. This is what I'm telling you guys. There's so many people in the top 100 that deserve to have a spotlight. Give them a chance and let's see what they can do. That's what I say. Let's give Turs a chance and let's see what he can do. And he's bringing the heat. He's up 1-0. But hey, Kapach is a veteran. Kapach is not going to go down this easily. He is fighting for, of course, $100 a week, as you can see. Uh, plenty of, uh, plenty of, money, uh, plenty of uh, money and opportunity, not just money, on the line here for Kapach. Because if he goes five straight wins in a row, he gets a bonus of $500. So there's a lot on the line here. Winner stays on, of course, rewards consistency and not just a one fluke performance. Let's take a look at the most created here. Most created for Paladin. Uh, for Turris was Paladin. Kapach had, of course, the hand cannon near. Monks didn't do a whole lot. He made 24 of them, but I swear he got, like, only 10 conversions. Uh, but yeah, a crazy, crazy game here to begin. Fast Imp, a kind of a bold strategy, I think. I have a hot take, guys. I think when it comes to the Fast Imp, you need to send two bills forward. Hear me out, hear me out. Let me cook, let me cook. You send two bills forward with the initial push, and you Palisade Gate the hand cannoneers. You know what I mean? You go into the hand cannoneers and the bomber cannons and you just start walling them in. And it makes it so hard for the guy to engage. That would be kind of a crazy approach, I feel, with the fast imp. But it's hard to say. It's hard to say if, that even, if even that would work. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a bit unclear. Hopping into game number two here. Uh, we've got migration. We're going to put Turs in red again. Uh, let's take a look at the map firstly here. Uh, we've got Kapoch playing in blue as the Dravidians. And we've got Turs playing in red as the Armenians. 
And the map is Migration, which is a very interesting one. A lot of people might not know about this map because it's not the most standard. But you basically start on a little island to begin. Uh, it's a decent island. You have you know, a few wood lines. You've got you know, a couple golds, a stone, berries, deer. You got just enough to get started. Uh, then you've got this middle island in the center, which is absolutely massive. I mean, take a look at this monster. Uh, a ton of gold and stone. Five relics to fight for. Uh, a lot of woodlands and a lot of space, most importantly. There's a lot of space that players want to, uh, you know, definitely dominate and, and force their opponent to kind of scramble near the edges of the island. So uh, there's a lot to fight for in the center. And of course, separating them from the center is the water. So quite a bit of water, a lot of fish in the water as well, if you take a look throughout the outside. Um, but the distance is not too big as far as transporting over. So definitely a very interesting map. And one thing I realized is that Kapach is in like the corner. Like he is very far from the middle island, actually, if you think about it. Like his TC is here. Middle island is like over here, whereas Turs is a lot closer. Or maybe it's like a perception thing. But Kapach seems like he's in his own corner. What if Kapach just goes for a fish boom back here? Like a Black Forest fish boom at the back would go incredibly hard. Even like here, for example. It would go incredibly hard. But then again, he wouldn't have access to the center if he does that. So I'm not sure how good that is. Probably not very good. Javidians and Armenians are both civilizations that are quite strong on water maps, by the way. Armenians might be considered the best on water maps. But the thing is, that's going to be best on water maps where galleys are played. On migration, though, it seems like the most popular civilization or the most popular unit choice is more like the fire galley. And Dravidians and Italians definitely are very popular choices there. But let's see what the Armenians can do. Remember, they do start with uh, a very different setup. They have mule cart instead of lumber camp. So uh, mule cart would be much more efficient long term. You can also move it from wood to gold as you wish. You can even take some stone if you want. So the Armenians are a very unique civilization when it comes to water maps. And oh, sorry, my dock is very ugly, guys. Um, yeah, I actually got a new mod. Which makes it easier to fish boom around the dock, but it makes it way uglier. I'm really not a fan of it. It looks like basically a dock from the Stone Ages. Like, it looks like a dock from Age of Empires 1, honestly. It, it just looks odd. But, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I have to fish boom properly in Black Forest, and uh, I have to use this one, apparently. Yeah, it is really ugly. I know, I know. But it is what it is. I mean, it doesn't even look like a dock. It looks like ruins. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. It looks like a, a, a sunken shipwreck. Yeah, getting one that looks better would definitely be on my cards. I'll have to look into that. By the way, on this map, like migration, we usually see a mix of fighting on uh, land and water, right? And let me let you in a little bit of a secret. This is my opinion. I think from the amount of practice I've done for this map and for tournaments and stuff, I think this is one of the hardest maps to play at the top level in the game. Like not maybe not in terms of strategy. I think it's pretty obvious what people want to go for nowadays. It's been pretty figured out. There's still a couple of strategies you can go for. But as far as execution, I think it's one of the hardest because you're going to be fighting on water on two sides, one here and one here. You can go either way usually. So you have a mix of sides on water and you're going to be fighting in the middle land and you're going to be managing economy on your homeland and the middle land. Think about how hard that is. There's like literally five things going on at the same time. So when I say a map is hard to play, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Just how many things are going on at the same time. Uh, very nice approach here from Turris. He is going to go for the fast feudal approach with the Armenians, most likely going to go for the galleys. So I said at the start, uh, usually fire galleys and a fast castle is kind of what people want to go for. Uh, but Turris is completely changing it up. With the Armenians, he is going to go for the uh, galley rush, the, feud the fast feudal galley rush. Now, this has a few, ben uh, few benefits, but also has a few uh, downsides. Now, the benefits to this is that you get the galley. Uh, which with the Armenians shoots two arrows, which is quite a strong tool. You get to snipe the opponent's fish rather early. The downsides, though, is that you're kind of stuck in feudal age for uh, a long time, or at least a little bit longer than your opponent. And your opponent could potentially get to the center and start taking the relics earlier, get a town center earlier, and just get more middle control uh, before you're even in the middle yourself. So uh, 
Uh, you, you have more advantage on the water in the early game, but you have less grip of the land by doing this. So, you know, it could be good and it also could be bad. It's not like by going for this, Turs is, uh, yeah, Turs is guaranteed to win the game. He is basically just guaranteed to get a nice advantage on the water. Uh, let's see what Kapoch can do, though. He sees the fast up time now. Kapoch now clicks up the Feudal Age. So still needs to buy like 2 minutes and what? 2 minutes 10 seconds? Yep. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of time to buy. I don't know if he's going to be able to uh, have that much time available to him before Turz is on his neck with uh, Armenian galleys. So, so far, I feel like Turz's approach is not too shabby here. Can you put a mule cart in a transport ship? Of course you can. This is Age of Empires. You can put a war elephant in a, tra in a transport ship. Here comes the galleys. Kapoch has a minute to go here. And remember, the rush distance is quite far. I mean, take a look at this. I'm getting tired just thinking about this journey. Look at this. It's going to have to go all the way around here. All the way around. Say hi to the bear. Pass by all the riches. Keep going around. Stranded island. Don't land there. Keep going. Keep going. And then you'll find the fish. This is going to take forever. We'll see you guys next week uh, when Turz manages to find Kapoch's uh, fish. Just kidding. Give him 30 seconds. He'll be here. So anyways, point is, all, all the lame jokes aside, Kapoch does have a lot of time before he needs to deal with Tur's aggression. And in, in that time, he's going to go ahead and add in a fourth dock and go for some fire galleys himself. I mean, really, there's nothing stopping him from going galleys, to be fair. But going galleys is um, not the usual. So yeah, I expect to see fire galley. And there you go. Kapoch actually queues five fire galleys to begin. Uh, kind of puts his fast castle on halt a little bit here. He wants to defend his fish first and foremost. Turs finally gets there with the first two galleys. Alright, let's take a look. Uh, the Armenian galley shoots an extra arrow, which does one damage. Oh, okay, GG. Bill's down? <laughs> I'm kidding, it's not GG, but that bill is GG. That bill is absolutely, completely dead. No loom, it gets absolutely two shots uh, by the Turs galleys here. And Turs continues moving in, absolutely fearless, by the way. Goes right past all of, all of the docks from Kapach. Um, Kapach could use the fishing ships to block, though. Turs runs away at the first sign of Kapach, uh, fires. And Turs is eating quite a little bit of harass here. Uh, he's gonna run away. He's gonna be somewhat okay here. But it's kind of a sign to not come back in. The thing is, these galleys do really good as they build up their number. Uh, one way to think about this, guys, the relationship between galleys and fires is kind of like the relationship between a crossbow and a knight. Something similar. Or let's say maybe like a cav archer in the night. Uh, since they move around the same speed. So basically the more cav archers you have. The more damage you can put on a single knight. But in a one to one. The knight will win. Does that make sense? I think it's pretty clear. Oh and wow. I am really impressed. Turs is about to click up the castleage. Is he going to get a faster castleage click. Than the guy going fast castle. No shot that just happened. What is this build from Turs? He gets fast feudal with galley pressure into fast castle. That is ridiculous. And we have Nikov in the chat saying it's more like Mangadai versus Teutonic Knight. Mangadai versus Teutonic Knight. Nikov is not a fan of the fire galleys at all, guys. Very funny way to put it here from Nikov. Honestly, I, I think you're kind of right. Like the fire galley is a little clunky. Definitely could feel a little awkward. Okay, Teuton Knights, not Teutonic Knights. Okay, okay, Teuton Knights. Yeah, no Husbandry Knights. Okay, okay, makes sense. I was like, damn, Nikov a little extreme there. Makes sense. But yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think, like, the fire ships or fire galleys can be a little clunky, but they get much better in Castleage. So Kapash is trying to buy himself some time here. All right. Turs does not have a lot, though. Only four. But they are shooting double arrows, which does, you know, a little bit of extra damage. So Kapash has to respect them. Kabach actually sends a rogue fire ship, though. Sends a rogue fire ship over to Terz's side. But Terz is completely fine. He adds his third dock. He is completely chilling. Will easily defend that one galley. But the game is hard for Terz to play. He has the micro on two sides. With galleys. So it takes a lot of attention here. Kabach is also making a transfer ship. And Kabach is in the center. So, again, it is the kind of situation here where Terz is going to be kind of doing better on water. But he doesn't have the land access that Kapach has. And honestly, long term, 
I think it's fair to say that the land in the middle is more important than the water in a vacuum. However, it's obviously more complicated than that. Like, if you win the water, in theory, your opponent cannot land anymore. So he's going to be stuck on his mainland and stuck in the middle with whatever he already has there. So winning water is in the indirectly affecting who gets the land. But Kapach is smart. Kapach landed earlier before the water has been decided. Kapach wants to pick up careening. All right, War Galley is in. Fireship is in now for Kapach. Let's see what he can do with these guys. Now the Armenian galley is really weird. Basically, it shoots like the bolt of the War Galley and then also like an arrow. Very very strange how it looks like. But uh, nonetheless, Terrace just wants no business here. He just goes back. He could add his own demos. Why not? A few demos and stuff could be good. Ooh, the transport's getting cooked. That could have been a disaster. But it's, it survives. Goes back in. The transport is braver than me, that's for sure. Uh, it looks like Kapoch is not too interested there, though. And it looks like Terrace wants to set up a town center. Uh, thing is, though, Kapoch is actually on the hunt with a couple, uh, couple scouts here. No light cap tech, just some scouts for the time being. Turs is getting down a town center. Think of how hard the game is now for Turs. He's got to get this, this town center down the center. He has to fight on this side and fight on this side. It's hard for me to cast this game. Imagine how hard it is for Turs to play this game. And there we go. I swear to God, Turs will never make this mistake if he wasn't fighting in two sides on water. But there you go. A crazy mistake. Kapach breaks the wall, kills three villagers. And also wins the right side. And this is simply because Terz is distracted. This is why this map is so hard to play. Your attention is just so split. In comes Kapach with more fire ships on the right side. Oh, and I think Terz is getting cooked right now. Transport goes down. The fish is dying so fast. The pressure on land is also kind of building up. And the fire ships are coming in from both sides. Terz has to micro this really well or he can take some bad trades. The fish is all dying. Kapach just targets that. Oh my goodness. That is absolutely busted here from Kapach. Really, really strong play. It was looking good for Terz, but I'm not sure what happened here. The war galley just wasn't the best choice in the end in Castle Age. No one expects a Dravidian lightcap as well. Look at this. Wait. This could get denied. Oh my god, this town center could get denied. This is terrible. Terz has to get this one up. I don't think he's going to pay attention though. The gate's coming down. Oh! Kapoch breaks the wall. The village is exposed. No freaking way. We have a doubt town center. He's trying to save it with some quick walls. But it's not going to happen. Terz lost his transport ship. He cannot transport into the center. He is so screwed. This is an absolute disaster. Like This is a disaster of the highest order for Terz right now. And yeah, the GG's called. Wow. What a response from Kapach. GG is well played in the chat, boys. Kapach shut up the play as well. He's not going to go down 2-0 to Terz. Not going to happen. Kapach responds beautifully with migration. Crazy, crazy performance. 22 minutes game. Just felt like Terz had like a really nice build, to be honest. But the war galleys in Castle just weren't cutting it for me. Maybe he needed more... I don't know what it is. Maybe more demos in Castle? Could have done it. Maybe switch to fires after the galley pressure in Feudal. It's hard to say. Because the game just gets so hard for the galley player. They have to fight light cav. They have to fight, you know, on both sides with galley versus fires. And yeah, and guys, the Dravidian light cav. What's wrong with Dravidian light cav, guys? Seriously, what's wrong with it? It did the trick. Dravidian scouts. It's a thing. It's a thing. So you heard it here first. Hera thinks that Dravidian stable is great. In your next 1v1 Arabia game, pick Dravidians versus Franks and open stable. See what happens. And maybe Terz could have landed earlier. Hard to say, but honestly, masterpiece from Kapach. Like, really, really a strong performance there. Uh, outperformed Terz on water. Outperformed him on land. And, uh, yeah, he just um, he just absolutely destroyed uh, yeah destroyed Terz on, on, on all sides here on this migration. Uh, more economy for him as well. I don't think Terrace played a bad game. I just think Kapach played a better one. Welcome, guys, to game number three. We've got Kapach uh, versus Terrace. Kapach is going to be playing in blue as the Magyars, and Terrace will be playing in red as the Cumans. Now, the Magyars is another civilization in which 
Turs picked for Kapach. So if Turs loses again, uh, Turs is kind of a double agent here. He's uh, he's picking some good civs for Kapach. Uh, the map is Lowland. It's a very interesting one. Let's take a look at the map first before analyzing each player's individual map. Uh, map is Lowland, so you have uh, obviously the the starting location on the top of a hill. Uh, in the center, both players, their hill kind of goes down to the center, uh, where there's a lot of gold, a decent amount of space, and, uh, you know, also five relics to fight for. So, uh, five relics, a lot of gold and space. I think it's definitely worth fighting for, but if you go in a little too early, remember, you are going to be down a hill. So, like, imagine, let's say, uh, let's say Kapoch comes in and makes a town center here, Turs pushes him from the hill, and that's, that's that. Kapoch goes to a town center here. Turs can't push him from the hill, but he'll have a nice little area where he can always run back to the hill before taking fights. So, uh, you know, Turs definitely has uh, some uh, some really nice advantage there. Um, also, I think in terms of civilizations, Magyars are probably the more aggressive civilization of the two. Uh, they excel in feudal scouts. They excel with that pressure, cheaper scouts, free forging, um, you know, nice, strong, out the gates, very aggressive. Whereas Cumans, will, especially on this map, will probably want to go for a 2TC boom. So like the opposite of Magyars, they're going to want to defend and boom it up. Um, now, Turs doesn't have to do that. Um, that. That is probably the best option with, with the Cumans uh, to go for a 2TC boom, you know, kind of just set up a nice economy. Um, you know, maybe push in later in the castle, go to Kipchak. So you have a few options really after the boom. Uh, but again, you don't have to do that. He could easily open stable himself. Sorry, car in the background. Uh, he can easily open stable himself. He can go, uh, you know, archer opening just to stay defensive into 2DC. He can really mix it up. Uh, he doesn't have to lock himself into one strategy. However, it, it is the most played strat to go for the 2DC. Also, this map is somewhat easy to wall. So, like, for example, if Turris is able to wall this side, just a nice little palisade wall here, also a little bit here, and then kind of wall in a circle like that, he can fully wall his base within a minute. Like within two minutes, he'll be fully walled. And that can really set up his nice 2TC boom. Kapach also, like I did talk about the Magyar Scout Rush, right? But he doesn't need to go for a Magyar Scout Rush. He can easily go for Mena Arms. He can go for two Militia. He can go for Mena Arms Tower Rush. He can even go for like a fast castle. Castle drop. So many strategies from Kapach can work here. It, it, there's, there's a lot of strategies, especially against the Cumans, that can become, you know, somewhat decent. Like a fast castle, castle drop is not a thing uh, against any other Civ. Like it just would never work. But against Cumans, it could be a really good option to counter the 2TC push, for example. Uh, sorry, the 2TC boom. That's why uh, Cumans kind of makes the game very weird. It makes a lot of different strategies viable, whereas normally they wouldn't even be thought about. Let's see what Kapoch goes for. It is worth noting that you don't have a lot of gold on your mainland as well. You actually get only two tiles of two gold each. And uh, same thing for the stones. So two piles of two stones. Interesting. But yeah, of course. If you go for a fast castle and your opponent plays normal as humans, you're dead. Exactly. It's a little bit of a mind game. This is personally why I actually just, uh, you know, ban humans, uh, myself, me personally. I think they're just a little bit too volatile for my taste. And it looks like Turs is actually just walling up his base. He wants to, you know, just stay a little safe. Who is the best player that has signed up for Winter Stays On? Doubt and Tato are the two biggest names. But we also have Vinchester in there. We also have Hart in there. There's quite a few big names. ACCM is in there as well. Yeah. Quite a few big names signed up. But remember, it's a random draw. The reason I made it a random draw, by the way, I think you guys would agree with me. If I just gave it to, like, highest ELO gets to play, then it's once again, it's money that's going to be gate kept to, like, the top 10 players. And I didn't want that. I wanted to give the chance for guys like Turs to prove themselves. I wanted to give them a chance to earn some money because they are top players who don't really get that opportunity very often. Second TC gets dropped, guys. It's going to be a 2TC boom directly from the Cuban player. See what Turs can do to hold this. Because uh, going for the 2TC boom is a bold approach. Especially against the Magyars, who do have a really aggressive start. 
Watch this raider to make use of the aggressive start. Plus one attack. Forging will kick in at the start of Feudal Age. He's got three militia. Probably going to be men at arms. Straight across the map that Turs will now have to deal with. Let's take a look. Plus one attack is in. Men at arms. Double bit axe right away. Any follow up. No range follow up just yet. So just the men at arms to start this one off. That DC is really nice. It's going to be connecting two wood lines and also it's going to be on the gold. Oh, 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 Kapach runs in. He's going to snipe two of the sheep. <laughs> that is so... Why were they there? Turs, what the hell? Keep them under the main DC. It might be best. And, uh, okay, some some minor mishaps from Turs. Kapach just then breaks the palisade walls. And also, Terrace is forced into a uh, quick barracks. So he probably wants to get onto a range ASAP to deal with those men arms. Remember, he has to deal with it via range. He can't deal with it via stable because the men arms are simply too strong to fight. He, they have 6 plus 1 attack. You're not fighting those with scouts. No way. He barely has food income to keep uh, the TCs running here at this point. So, yeah, going for scouts would not be an option. It has to be range here. It has to be range. Uh, Cuban Scout does move faster. There's the, there's the range here. Okay, the Castle knows what he's talking about. Okay, not too bad. Uh, I do play this game for fun on the weekend, so I do know a few things. And now we have the Cuban Scout chasing the Magra Scout away. Cuban Scout moves faster, so this could potentially be bad for Kapach. Don't think he cares, though. I think he got enough value from the Scout to where he should be fine. Also, kills the mill and works on the house with the Men at Arms. Now, my honest opinion, I don't think Kapach has done enough. And I think Kapach agrees with me because he's sending now two bills forward. I think he needs to do way more damage than what he's done. He hasn't done bad. He's killed the two sheep, killed the mill, pushed Turs off berries. So Turs has a pretty weak boom, for sure. That's definitely true. The thing is, though, Kapach has also weakened himself with the men at arms. So he needs to invest a little bit more uh, to really force Turs to stay stuck in the feudal age. Against the Cumans, you want to keep them in the feudal age as long as possible because if they get the castleage and clear your push, then it's going to be really hard to fight them. They usually have like a 10 or 15 build lead. What is worth mentioning though right now. Terrace is a lot of idle TC time. So even though he's up with two TCs. He's only up one build. <laughs> Think about how unimpressive that is. Like to be up only one villager. And he can't make a counter tower. He has only 100 stone in the bank. What a good, what a good play from Kapash. That is a really, really aggressive tower. He knows that Turris cannot match it, so why not? Why not go for a forward tower that is as aggressive as possible? Turris has a nice counterattack with one scout. He has initial scout. that might kill one archer and run away. That's not bad. He takes those, but he still doesn't have an answer to that tower. Part of me says I think he should send ten bills and just try to fight it. But the, art of, the other part of me says maybe just back up and wait. This tower is going to hit four farms, maybe five, maybe six. This farm will hit like six. Uh, sorry, this tower hit six farms. Very reasonable for Kapach. It's a good tower. Turs is forced to run. He's, he's going to sneak four bills out here. Now, Kapach doesn't know about those. But if Kapach gets lucky and finds those guys... This could be somewhat problematic. Okay. Curse is now creeping up with the bill count. We got three extra bills. Will Kapoch find this? Like, this is not that hidden, by the way. Like, Kapoch, if Kapoch looks over and sees there's a, there's a dead Ibex, he knows someone killed it. And he knows... It's probably Turs. It's not going to be the lion. It's going to be Turs. So all he has to do is look up and, fi and, and find that an Ibex has been killed. That's Kapach's job right now, but it's hard. He's not thinking about that. If he spots it, it's going to be about him getting lucky mo most of the time. I, I don't think there's any reason to even look over there. So let's see. Could happen. Kapach could get pretty fortunate and just happen to look at the right spot. Three villages in that tower now. Turs is trying to trade. He wants to keep his uh, range alive. If he loses the range, it could be trouble. Oh. Did Kapash spot it? I don't think so. 
This is like Terrence is playing with fire with those four bills. I swear to God, that's a very risky mill on those deer. Kabach goes for a mill on Terrence's berries. Good micro from Kabach. Picks up two archers for free right there. Very sick stuff. Question from the chat. Why not just get Fletching so that both of his town centers can hit the tower? Range? Uh, Fletching does not give town centers extra range. So look at the Fletching's coming in. It has 6 range. And it's still going to have 6 range. It gives them extra attack but not extra range. Armor's coming up. The Turris is looking to push this one all the way back. Kapach is almost like... Look at Kapach's resources. He's actually almost up to castle at the moment. And my noob ass just learned something new. You guys didn't know that? Well, now you do. No shame. No shame. Sometimes no one just tells you stuff. No one tells you these things, you know? That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. To help you guys out. Help you guys learn. New things every day. These, these four bills. I, I, he's... he's like, Turris is absolutely just getting away with murder with these four bills. This is ridiculous. But, I mean, that just goes to show, like, even in pro games, you're going to see risks like that pay off. Like, it's kind of a smart risk from Turris. Market comes up. Now, this is really messy. Like, the trees are running low here. He's going to get to another wood line. He made a mill in the back just to get more farms. He doesn't have the most amount of farms. His tower is still causing some problems. Really weird walls on the tower as well, but uh, just to keep it rather safe. Yeah, Turz is having an uncomfortable game. Botch is up to Castleage now. Turz, though, is up 15 bills. So if you can just get the Castleage like, as fast as possible here, I think he's still in a decent position. Like It's, it's even hard to say from this position who's going to win. Okay. Castle it isn't. Like, 40 second advantage for Kapach is not that much. But though, like, the thing is, Kapach will have uh, the two stables forward. So, like, it's not a big advantage, 40 seconds. But with the stables forward, it, it is going to be hard to defend. Because the knights will come out directly into your base. So, yeah, it's still going to be hard for Terrace to hold this one. I'm curious to see what he's going to do with those four bills after he's done with that Ibex. Maybe send them onto a gold or stone. Maybe just send them to the corner. Kabach still hasn't spotted it. And at this point, I don't think he will spot it. Uh, the skirmishers from Turs are just keeping some nice defense for the time being. Also, the KD is 5 and 4. So, like, not a lot of fighting has been taking place. Well, like, a decent amount of fighting, but not a lot of killing. Both players keeping their army more or less alive. All right, nice, nice house walls here from Terz, keeping this whole left side, which is exposed a little bit more, uh, you know, out of reach. Two knights immediately queued for Kabach. Look at that, immediately queued two knights. Gets plus two armor, bow saw right away. God, how are we gonna deal with those? Terz, what's the plan? He's gonna go three stables. Humans do get camels. In fact, I think it's the only save in the game that gets camels, but not heavy camels. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. Three archers counterattack from Terz. Looking for, I don't know, something. I'm not going to find too much. Knights coming in. Terz just hits Castleage now. How are we dealing with those first two knights? This is so scary. He goes for knights himself. Not even going to go camels. He's not interested in camels. He's going to go straight for the knights on three stables. Remember, Magyar knights do get the free plus two attacks. So those knights are strong. Out come the three stable knights. He should have enough to defend this one. One, two spears maybe could help out. He has to wait for the second rotation, but the thing is he can barely afford it. Maybe selling off some wood would be very uh, very much needed here from Terz. He needs to hold right now. He needs to just hold. He's up 10 bills, up 12 bills. Not too bad. He can hold on a little bit. It's going to be good for him. Really interesting that he didn't go for camels. I wonder why. I mean, I don't think the Knights is like a big mistake or anything, but it would almost feel like the natural thing to just go Camels on defense. There's just a lot of wood. Needs to find a way to spend that wood now. Maybe more farms at the back? 
Uh, maybe a sneaky town center out here could have been okay, but he goes for a mining camp instead. Uh, maybe Turs can also go for a monastery and monks. That could also be a pretty decent option. We know, you know, Kapach has the monk himself. The monastery is there. And Kapach adds a second town center at home. Not going for the middle just yet. Kapach has a lot of gold issues, though. Gold has been running out. He's actually got zero on gold. So this town center is coming at the perfect time to take some of that fresh gold mine. What about Turs? Does he have gold issues? He also has gold issues. He has only the four out here. Uh, this gold mine is running out. It has another, you know, couple hundred in it, but not going to last them forever. And those skirmishers are like kind of useless, but Turs is using them pretty smartly. He's using them just to keep an eye on Kapoch. Turs hasn't moved out. In theory, there's nothing stopping him from moving out. He can easily counterattack. The reason he's not doing that, though, is that he's wide open and he's exposed. If he counterattacks and Kabosh does the same thing, Kabosh is guaranteed to find damage, whereas Turs is not. So, kind of the reason why Turs is staying defensively with his knights for the time being. And a town center comes up in the center for Turs. And same for Kabosh, actually. Yeah, both, both players. What is this? A scout out of nowhere from Turs. Goes ahead and picks up the monk, and now Turs gets a little boost of confidence. Goes forward with the knights. The monk is behind. I think with the with the monk there, Turs should be taking winning trades. Eight hundred wood. Turs got to spend the wood. He's up two thousand res right now in terms of res collected. But it's hard to say. He's been using the market quite a bit. His economy is not very nice. Paganini with the raid. Welcome to Paganini's viewers. This is winner stays on. We're currently 1-1 between Turs and Kapoch. Yeah, a ram wouldn't be the worst choice as well. A ram would be nice from Turs. A thousand wood? What are you saving up for? He's about to build himself a cabin in the woods. Make one of those videos on YouTube. Surviving in the wildlife with nothing but a knife. And a thousand wood, apparently. Yeah, I don't think I don't know about those videos, guys. I've been watching. I've been, I've been looking, around, looking out. I want to see what people are doing on YouTube. All right. More farms. It's nice. You got it. Any way to spend the wood is nice. Like maybe selling it's not the most efficient. So finding ways to spend it, like a you know a siege workshop, or even a university for later could be okay. Maybe even more stables. Anything could be good. But you know, Turs is a lot of knights now. But still so hesitant. Doesn't want to commit to any fight in particular. Yo, Turs is really focused on this tower. He just cannot. Turs cannot go on living his life knowing that that tower is still there. He needs to clear that one before he can even think straight. Kapoch, though, doesn't even care about the tower. He's going to use it as a distraction. And he's going to find, for the first time this game, Turs' expansion. A knight? Wait, what? What happened to that knight? Oh, it got sniped by a, by a knight. Interesting. Sorry, what happened to the monk, I meant to say? Monk went down. Yeah, and Turs is just stuck dealing with that tower. I, I guess if you really want to kill it, you just go for a ram, right? Apples is there. It almost feels like Turs is a little bit nervous right now. He's waiting for a castle, maybe. Can you see nice economy upgrades? What is it? The bear rush? The, the skirmisher lured two bears over. That's the danger of being out in the woods by yourself. Gotta fight them off. Oh, he's 1v2! Somebody help him! Oh, he's a savage. He killed the bear and hopped into the town center. But at the same time, Kaposh collaborating with the bear. Uses the bear as a distraction. Goes in with the knights. Has more than Turs at the moment. Forcing Turs back. No monks on the field means there's nothing for Kaposh to worry about. If he can take the fight, he'll take it. 20 knights for him. Only 15 for Turs. Turs is in trouble. Mixing in some camels now. Actually has 10 in the queue. Is that what I'm seeing right now? 10 camels in the queue. Realizes he needs them. Kapoch is going for a forward castle. Didn't expect Kapoch to be one with the bears, to be honest. But that was quite a nice timing for him. The camels are in, but I think Kapoch still takes the fight. Kapoch is going to go for it here. Iron casting 50 seconds away. Castle for Kapoch is forward on Turs' expansion. The Magyar Knights are absolutely cooking. This is not even close. Turs is getting mauled right now. 
Curse is getting mauled. Send them back. Heavy Plow is going to come in. Yeah, that's going to pay off next week, maybe. At this rate, the Knights are not going to let you even get onto the farmland, let alone the farmland lasting longer. Get that Heavy Plow out of my face. That is not the time for that kind of upgrade. The Knights are all over the map right now. Kapach is not taking prisoners. Look at him. Few Knights over to this side. Knights on the mainland. Heavy Plow has finished, but the game is over. 125, 125 down the drain. But I mean, I don't want to be too harsh. I think Terz was dead either way. Definitely an interesting timing on that upgrade. Dude, crazy game from Kapach. He just absolutely just turboed at some point. The night count was even, but he just got like an extra five out of nowhere. And that was enough to really swing the fight. Remember, Lanchester's Law, guys, it's 20 nights versus 15. Kapach doesn't win and end with five, right? That's not how it works. Kapach will win and end with like 12, 15 maybe. Yeah. It, the snowball effect in these fights is massive. So keep that in mind when judging fights. And that's exactly what we saw there. Kapash just had a few extra knights and that turned into a massive advantage. And I think doing that at the same time as sending a forward castle is kind of nice. Like, it's kind of nice, you know? Like, like, even if you don't win the fight, you at least have the castle up. If you win the fight and the castle's up, it's GG. That's exactly what we saw. Honestly, I think, like, I think the tower killed Kurt. I think the tower killed Terz completely. It just mentally defeated him. What Terz should have done, start a castle when he was floating a thousand wood. Make a, make a ram, make a siege workshop, make a ram, clear all of this forward nonsense from Kapach. You kill three vills, you kill the monastery, you kill the two stables, and that puts him in a decent position. That puts Kapach only on two stables back home. You also clear the tower and you can think straight. So Terz, I think he never committed on this area. He should have. Because it kept distracting him. It never let him play a clean game. I think that really hurt his performance. Look at that. 34 nights for Kapach, only 15 for Terz. Take a quick look at the stats. Terz, more economy, but uh, believe it or not. It's more economy, more resources collected. Game number four. We've got Terz in the red uh, playing as the Portuguese against Kapach playing in blue as the Byzantines. Kapach has two lakes on his side and Terz has one lake. I think they should be fine. This is Black Forest, guys. Both players will play on Explored. So both players actually know exactly how the map looks like. And we have Terz going forward to build the wall as high up as possible. And I don't even think Kapach cares about that. Kapach is instead going to just be luring some deer and completely chilling. Um, guys, I don't think there's any need to restart. Both players have two relics. No, uh, Terz has three relics and Terz has six boars. And an extra gold and an extra stone. Oh my goodness. This black forest. Okay, wait. Kapach has extra. Want to re or not? These guys are just reing in every game. You guys cannot re. What is this rematch every black forest game? Just play the game, guys. Play the game. I think version is unfair anyway. This seems okay. This is fine. Just play the game, guys. If it was me playing, I wouldn't even use the lake, honestly. Who cares about the lake? Just play, make some farms, develop the economy. Bro, I want to see Terz go for some fast in Pretoria. Anyways, it's very unprofessional of me, guys. They were just, you know, going back and forth. Three relics versus two lakes. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Exactly. He gets six boars. He gets two lakes. Let's just see what happens, guys. Let's see what's better. Uh, Terz goes forward. And he's actually going to go ahead and wall in this crocodile. And he's going to be pulling in some boars. Uh, yeah, Terz is going to be bringing in... Three boards at the same time. Take a look at this, guys. But anyway, very unprofessional commentary from mine. Let's take a look at the map real quick. Black Forest, of course, one choke, a lot of trees. Uh, I really want to focus on the spoiler, though. Portuguese for, for Terz, uh, quite a solid civilization, known for its gunpowder, cheap gold units, really strong late game. Has the Fitoria option as well that could be coming in clutch. Byzantine for Kabach is also not bad as far as like trash unit spam, cheaper Hub, cheaper Skirm, uh, cheaper Camel as well if you want it. And, uh, you know, a pretty decent late game in terms of, you know, stronger buildings, bomber cannons in there. But overall, I think Portuguese will be fielding the stronger composition, whereas Byzantine has a bit more potential for, like, unit spam. Okay. Curse with a nice little triple lure here. Will he lose any vil? No, no, he won't. Yeah. Okay. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Terz gets three boars then. Honestly, this is a really good start for Terz. Kapach does not have any extra boars, so he does not have, uh, you know, Kapach cannot uh, make use of that luxury. And Terz can go in for another three uh, boars as well. Now, for me personally, uh, the reason why I'm insisting on using the rank ladder for Black Forest is that I really want this 
uh, match to be all about the rank ladder. You qualify by playing rank ladder, get to the top 100, you're able to get picked, and then you play on the rank ladder. If there's any version on the rank ladder that's just like, you know, not the best version of the map, I think that's up to Microsoft to make the changes. Um, and maybe this, uh, maybe this winter stays on can actually highlight some of those problems and get it to Microsoft's attention. Or maybe not. Maybe we're just not that big at the end of the day. Um, yeah, maybe Microsoft doesn't even just know my name in, in, in general. Who knows? It's, it's hard to say. Uh, but yeah, we, we could definitely, uh, we could definitely implement some rules like no using extra boards or whatnot, but, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Tours has a nice little advantage though. Extra boards is in there. He's going to be learning some deer. Kobot should still be fine though. He has two rhinos. It's not like he's got nothing. He also has two lakes and he's starting to use the first one here, uh, with some fishing ships and it looks like Tours is going to be using his, uh, his lake as well. Remember, can watch his two lakes, one of them with two fish in it, the other one with just one. You might be thinking at home watching this, why are they even docking? There's only one fish. This does not make any sense. But the problem is, uh, it's just all about the fish traps. It's not about the fish. It's not about, uh, you know, a regular fish, um, you know, regular dock setup to take advantage of the fish and that's it. They just want to build fish traps. So regardless of how many fish there are, it's all about just getting the fish traps around the dock and that's it. It's uh, known as a little fish boom. Also, yeah, it looks like uh, Terrence has a little bit of idle TC time, but nothing more. So the start has been pretty decent. Now we'll bring out his fishing ships. Thing is, Terrence's lake is quite small, whereas uh, Kabach, it's small lake, but he has two of them. And he has even a third one if he really wants to honor the cut, but we won't be seeing that. Now, let's say a reasonable start from both. What's interesting, though, is that Kabach actually did not go for a wall at all. It, Kabach, does he even know this is walled? Yeah, he knows it's walled. I guess he's looking for a sneak right now. Ooh. Kabach is actually looking for a sneak from Terz. So this looks like his movement is a bit weird. But what he's actually looking for is if Terz snuck in a vill without Kabach knowing. So this is actually really smart from Kabach. To make the, the the laps around with the scout. Terz is looking for uh for the rhinos. He's gonna be luring it with a low HP bill. Four HP, he wants to lure four uh, three rhinos. Four HP to lure three rhinos. That's gonna be so risky. But if you can get these back in, that's like six rhinos is a lot of advantage. A lot of advantage. He's going to go for it here. I I don't know. I don't know. Okay, chat. W one, if Terz is successful. Two, if he loses the bill. Oh, my God. Ah! <laughs> okay, it's two. That was disastrous. That was a disaster. No freaking way. Say where the boar smacked him. The boar smacked him. Ain't no way that just happened. That was so ambitious. That was so ambitious from Terz. Bro, that was as bad as it could have got. Oh my god, he's sending a woman. He's sending a woman. He needs to avenge. This woman will avenge the loss of the manville. Let's take a look. God, that was hilarious. Breaking Terz. He's going to go for it again. He's up to Feudal Age. This could be really, really rough because he's going to have to make the buildings to go up to Castle Age. He's going to need to go for like a Market Blacksmith. He's actually missing some wood here for it. Uh, also picks up Loom, so he's playing it safe. He's playing it safe. Damn it. Terz is playing it safe. Look at this guy. But I mean, it did force him to get Loom. Like, I don't even know if this is worth it at this point. Kabach is also now starting to hit the walls. This is so interesting, man. Market Blacksmith going down. There should be somewhat fine for this fast castle, but I mean, like, he is... It's not the best, like, build from him. Kabach has a lot more resources. Yeah, Kabach has a lot more resources collected, so... Yeah, I mean, despite having the extra boards, I feel like Terz is actually weaker right now. Kabach has done a much cleaner start. He's also on stone for some reason. I guess he wants to drop a castle. Wait, is Kabach gonna fast imp? I think Kabach is gonna fast imp. I think Kabach is gonna fast imp. Oh my god, get hyped, guys. We've seen Kapach do a fast imp on Turks on the arena the first game. It failed, but it got me, it got me really excited. I think he's gonna try it again. 
So he's gonna castle drop the center and go in with like some monk fast and shenanigans. The thing is though, Turz has a nice area to wall off. Okay, let's take a look. He's trying it again. Woman takes one hit. She'd be dead if she had four HP. I think this time he's fine. He's got the scout here. She has loom. It should be fine. Like I, I would be surprised if Turz messes this one up. Let's take a look though. She's running away. But yeah, the three rhinos coming in. Oh, oh, this guy is stupid. He's oh my god, they're so stupid. Oh, the villager's taking some hits though. He's blocking his villager. <laughs> She's taking so many hits. There's like Loki a chance she dies. By the way, it's like Loki. There's actually a chance she dies. Oh, <gasps> no way! Disaster. One goes back. He's piecing out. This is like the worst triple rhino boar I've ever seen. Okay, he gets it down. Oh my god. Oh, she almost died. She's on 4 HP. God, thank god. Just for Turks' sake. For Turks' sake. Very happy. Nothing else bad has happened there. Uh, Turks is also going on stones. He also wants to get a castle up, but he is nowhere near clicking up the feudal. Uh, to him, sorry. Nowhere near right now. Like He has no res in the bank. Where's Kapach? Yes, what Kapach is doing, guys. Kapach is going to drop a castle and go up to Imp. Simple as that. He's got the res set up. Remember, Imperial is just cheaper for Byzantine. So this is really good from Kapach. Let's take a look. Terry is going for the castle. We're going to make it, my man. Kapach makes it safe at home. Goes for a monastery as well. Okay. Wants some monks. Is Terry going to delete? Does he want to push? going to delete the walls? This is what Terry sees. Like, he doesn't know the castle is happening. He's going to make the castle here. This is... Fodder. This is fodder to be trebbed. How was Kapach up a thousand res? What even happened this game? This is not gonna work, right? Like, Turs will just simply get trebbed down. I think doing all of the shenanigans for the boards just was not worth it, honestly. And Kapach only goes... This is like such a cute fish boom. Like, three fish traps. Turs is doing a lot more. I don't know, man. It just feels like Kapach is a better, like, early game. Turs really messed something up. I don't even know what, but... I mean, I, I did see the build loss, but... Yo, Kapach is up to imp. This is a crazy, crazy good fast imp. Ridiculous! He's gonna hit a 20-30 fast imp. With Byzantine. That is ridiculously good. With a castle as well. And like usually the, the the Portuguese player wants to go like organ gun push, but the thing is it won't actually do anything. Turz now knows about the castle. He must be kind of stressing because like the castle from Kapach basically means that he's up. Because why would Kapach make a castle? He's not gonna go cataphract, right? So he would never make a castle if he was not up to imp. Yeah, beautiful Kapach build, beautiful Kapach strategy. He's gonna go redemption monks now to convert the organs for sure. Watch slaps, slaps down five houses, wants to stay safe. Does he have loom? He doesn't have loom, so those bills are actually kind of weak. The organ could kill one or two. Yeah, yeah, one dies, maybe one more. Not going to go for it. Terrence is going to try to break in. The thing is, he's on a really big timer, because if he cannot break in here and do massive damage, Kapach is empty. He's going to trap down the castle, and he'll be completely fine. Now, it is worth mentioning. I don't think it's... 100% GG. Yes, Kapach will win. Uh, you know, this this area, he's gonna push everything back, he's gonna win the treb war, whatever, right? Turs can five layer stonewall both sides. And I think he can stall the game out till he gets the imp. That's what I'm thinking right now could be a nice win condition for Turs here. Just five layer stonewall, buy himself a ton of time, and get up to Imperial Age where maybe Portuguese can win with Fitoria? Maybe? Oh, this organ got stuck as well. Yeah, it's a bad cast spot. Kapach is up to imp. Trebuchet comes out. I wonder how much Turs will play on. Like, he might just think to resign early. But he might try to think and just play on as much as he can. Two options could be, you know, on the cards here. It depends on the type of player he is. 
Goes for monasteries himself. That's not gonna help though. Wait, what? You can't go monasteries versus some guy who's already in. He's gonna have block printing with extra three range. That won't work. These will all die, right? Oh, he's going to the corner, but he's gonna be trapped. There's no way out. There's no way out. He's not gonna click up to Imperial Age. Yeah, I don't know about this. Kabach is on the hunt. <laughs> Kabach is chasing him. Kabach is chasing him. He is going to convert every single one of these units. You, Turs, you got to delete them, my man. He's just trying to buy as much time as he can. Turs is in the corner. Kapoch is hunting him. And Turs shift deletes the units. He cannot fight the monks from Kapoch. And now the stone walls come out. Again, the problem with Kapoch's monks is that you can't tell who's balder. The monk or Kapoch. It's just, it's the synergy there is ridiculous. You know, both the unit and the player has no hair. They're coming after you in a forest. I don't blame Turs for running to the corner. I simply don't. If that happened to me in real life, I would definitely run to the corner and delete myself in game. Um, now the fortified walls to start. Uh, two layers is not enough though. We need way more. I'm talking like five layers. Like literally just wall everything. I think you have to. I think you have to. I mean, take a look. Like the, the walls are not holding that much. They're going to hold like 30 seconds each layer. Yeah, 30 seconds each there is not a lot. You need fortify walls as well. You need the upgrade. Which I assume Portuguese has. And yeah, those two monasteries were just like nonsense. They're just going to get trapped down here as well. Turs going for more stone walls. Has a nice fish boom in theory, by the way. Better than Kapoch. This is a little bit of a pathetic fish boom. But like, it's just enough to keep his bills producing if he wants them. Yeah, definitely not like the, the regular fish broom you'd like to see on Black Forest. But Kaparch has enough. He's a humble guy. He's got enough for what he needs. Turs will now wall this up. Please fast wall it. Please fast wall it. Turs, you gotta wall this up. The, the scout is there. Oh my lord. Oh. Oh. Kaparch just runs past. Okay. Okay. I mean, fair enough. Turs isn't complaining, that's for sure. He gets up to Imperial Age. Four monasteries. Like, the counter to Monk is just to Monk him back. The counter to monks is just to monk him back, it seems. Does Sirius hit this quick wall? Oh. 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 Traps Kapacha scout. Turs is out. What a savage. But Kapacha is pushing in. There's no more walls. Kapacha is pushing in. He's converting everything. Villagers, monks, everything. Kapacha can get his grimy, baldy hands on. He's converting. Oh, by the way, I'm good friends with Kapacha. He doesn't mind me making these remarks. Don't worry about it. Uh, and yeah, GG. <laughs> yeah, GG's called. Kapoch is absolutely slaying there. Kapoch is slaying with the Monk Rush. That was such a good, that was such a good game from Kapoch, honestly. Like, just really, really strong. Honestly, that was sick. Fast imp with Byzantine. He had no extra boars. How did he manage? How did he manage? I don't even know. Like, I think Turs just messed himself up with the boars. Like, Byzantine have no economy advantage. So it's it's so surprising that Turs fell so far behind. He had the extra boars as well. Why can't Red go Lightcap? He's got nothing. Like, he's got no food, no time as well. And by the way, thinking that Lightcap counters monks on Black Forest, unfortunately, it's not the case. Because the thing is, if Turs goes Lightcap, Kapach will convert the Lightcap. And if Turs gets enough like calf to where Kapoch gets overrun, Kapoch goes pikes. So no matter what happens, Kapoch will win the exchange with the monks. They're just that good on maps like Arena or Black Forest. GG, well played. Quick game for Kapoch. Again, he's known for his quick games here. He is absolutely kind of just dominating this one. Turs has more resources collected, but Kapoch had more when it mattered. Got the fast imp and just absolutely dominated there. Well played, well played. Welcome guys to game number five between Kapoch and Turs and this week's winner stays on. Kapoch is actually a two-week champion and he's one win away from being a three-week champion. He is going to be playing in blue as the Incas and his opponent is going to be Turs playing in red as the Khmer. Turs started off the series really strong winning the first game but then dropped three pretty quick games against Kapoch in a row and he must be feeling the pressure right now. The thing is 
Uh, Turs actually has nothing to lose, and we have a little bit of a pause. Okay. Let me see if they need me. They should be good. Okay. Great series, Mr. Hera. Thank you. Glad you're enjoying it. Okay, so this is what we're going to do, guys. Uh, I, I'm, I don't take part in the winner stays on, but after someone wins five in a row and is labeled the season champion and Kapach is almost there, I would play them in a show match in the same settings. I would be like the final, final boss, but I won't do it. For, like, it would be not for money. It would just be on the side for fun. But for the money, uh, it's going to be with me aside. I'm just the host of the match, guys. It's not about me. It's yes. about the players. For taking the role as a caster here, taking a step back and letting them shine uh, on the spotlight. But just for fun, I could be like the final, final boss after uh, they have won the season. So we'll give them a chance to win five straight against other players first. And I think that makes it uh, a lot of fun. And of course, for those who missed any of this action uh, or just wants to support the event, you can subscribe to the Winner Stays On YouTube channel. And you can catch all of the previous editions there just to keep track of anything you missed. It'll all be uploaded there. So every week, you can always take a look there. Check it out and subscribe. Now we have Khmer from Turs. I think Khmer is definitely the stronger Civ out of the two. Uh, but the thing is, Incas is also a really strong civilization. It's not like Turs is a massive Civ advantage. Uh, but I think as far as the map goes, let's take a look here. He's got a backstone, uh, forward berries and forward gold. Uh, not the hardest to defend, though. You can easily wall. The, the forests are quite nice. So I would say Terz's map is okay. Not bad. Uh, over on Kabach's side, though, his map is looking a little bit better. Nice woodlands for him as well. Forward stone can be a bit awkward, but he has a nice back gold. Nice back stone as well for later. Berries off to the side. Pretty easy to defend. Can easily wall like this bottom. It's a little bit big, but, you know, you get that walled and you stay safe. Has a pretty easy time walling up the front as well. So I would say also Kapach's map is also quite okay. Slightly better than Terz's map though because of that back gold. Which helps a lot with the Mesosivs. Mesosivs basically have to get the gold. Um, they don't have access to scouts. So if you don't take gold, you're only stuck on spears and skirms. Which is not bad for the early game. But quickly becomes uh, you know quite a weak composition. Terz going for a nice deer push here. I'm also not sure if we're going to cancel next week's Winter Stays On because there's going to be Warlords taking place. So it's very possible we don't actually uh, have the event next week. We might skip a week uh, just to keep you guys informed about that. Very, very possible we skip one week. I don't want things to overlap. But whenever there's no tournament, we'll definitely have uh, the Winter Stays On match taking place. It's crazy how pushing deer has become the undisputed meta and the best thing you can do on Arabia, by the way. What happened is, like, basically at first, when, when, when the new sips were coming out and, you know, players were not sure what to go for, uh, scouting would be very important. But now, after we've played thousands of games and we've seen tons of tournaments on Arabia only, for example, King of the Desert, uh, you know, King of the Desert 3, 4, 5, we've seen so much Arabia. At this point, players are just luring three deer at the highest level and then scouting after that because they can kind of expect what the opponent will go for based on the matchup. It is very interesting. Um, in my opinion, I think it opens up some level of anti-meta gameplay. If you know your opponent will you know, lure the deer, you could scout him early, find him early, send the vil forward, try to harass him a little bit, maybe sneak something behind his base. It gives some anti-meta options a little bit more um, appeal. However, if you're not going to go for anything anti-meta, you're going to go for like standard approach. It's probably better to lure deer than to do anything else in terms of early scouting. Because luring the deer just gives you so much extra food. And that's food that comes in really fast as well. Which I think is a really big deal. Not, not only do you get extra free food, you also get it that, it, you know, it's a, it's a source that collects very fast. And I know for the average player, learning in deer is quite difficult. Like I know I do a lot of coaching. A lot of you guys you know, probably know this. Um, learning deer is really difficult. It's not, it, it looks easy, but it's really difficult, especially for the average player. Yes. But for pro players, for top 100 players, it's, it's basically second nature in early game to push deer. It does not hurt them at all. They get to lure all the deer, get all the benefits and get zero of the downsides because they're just so good at the game. Sure. 
Turz is coming in. He's he's pretty blind. Oh, this could be really bad for Turz. He's pretty blind, but oh, wow, good reaction. Finds the TC and actually dodges it. Doesn't take a single hit of damage. Watch me get in some more deer. Is this the fastest feudal, by the way? It goes for the stable. Ooh, don't like the positioning. It's not defending the gold too well. Unless he's planning to take the back gold, which could be the case. Just for the stable early as the Khmer. Remember, he doesn't need a barrack, so really fast scout rush from him. Double bit axe and horse collar, both economy upgrades coming in. So a classic scout rush here from Turs to open this one up. Potch. I'm expecting a range. Obviously, it can't make a stable, but it could be like a second barracks in some cases. But I think what's most popular with Mezzo is just a range plus barrack opening. It lets you, it makes you the most flexible. You get to make eagles or spears from the barracks, and then you can make archers or skirmishers from the range. So it gives you the most amount of flexibility. In this case, I think we're going to see archers and and spears probably, as the uh, you know the spears will counter the scouts nicely. And the archers will be your main DPS force in the back. There's just a lot of scouts on the field already. I like this wall from Kapoch though. He walled off this entire right side so fast. And look, he has a spearman position on this left side. Or this, like, bottom side. It's so smart. It's so smart. Like, Kapoch set up this map so beautifully. Like, he's safe on this top side. And he's safe on the bottom side, more or less. Walled in the gold and has a spear patrolling on both, you know, the wood and the berries that are quite exposed. Now goes for a blacksmith, also as part of the wall. Every single building Kapoch is making is part of a wall. That's how pros play. It's so calculated. He will lose the eagle, though. Nothing he can do about that. Scout just simply moves faster and is stronger, so the eagle will always die one-on-one. -on -one. I think Kapoch should just hit back. Running away, you're doing nothing. I don't understand why players do that, actually. They just run away with the eagle. Just hit back. Get some value, at least, before you go down. Yep. He gets one hit. You could have gotten, like, way more value there. But, my lord, three spears on the field and three archers. Moving across the map now. Fletching's coming in. Curious does have the range, though, so he should be more or less fine. Especially with that range transition, blacksmith's there as well. Scouts and skirms should push back everything Mezzo can go for, especially this attack with three spears and archers. Botch is left pretty defenseless at home. Has only his walls and one spear. Okay, make that two spear. Everything's more or less just going forward here. Do you make a spear before eagle if you're Mezzo against scouts, or second eagle is better? Personally, I prefer making eagles. I, I like to do one or two spears on defense, but if I like to go forward, I like it to be eagles and archers because here's the problem. He has spears and archers, which is fantastic against scouts, but as soon as a skirm hits the field, the skirm counters both of these units. So Kaposh is basically just hoping that Turs does not have a range, but Turs has the range. And so I just don't see how Kaposh gets any value here. If anything, it's going to be Turs pushing this back and maybe even getting some value and killing some free units. So Kaposh... Kind of underestimating turds here a little bit. Uh, at least that's that's the way I see it. Oh, but Turz underestimating himself there. Had a free fight. Four skirmishers, four archers, and actually backed up. Self-confidence is a really big part of uh, Age of Empires, guys. Turz backed up from a winning fight there. Interesting. Sometimes you could get into your own head when you're down 3-1 against a stronger opponent on paper. You could think you're just never going to win a, a single battle. But in this case, Turs has the better army. just has to play it well. See the micro here. Kapoch still has potential to take a decent fight. Ooh, gets two hits with the spears downhill. Kills a scout. 
the scouts have to really be careful they can't really engage properly he's gonna go ahead and take the fight curse gets a decent engagement there but the scouts uh kind of get thinned out there only two scouts remaining those four archers is kabach gonna commit is he gonna sneak around there's no way he's gonna just sneak to the gold he just got cleared up here Tears is taking a little afternoon nap, it seems, but uh, yeah, Kabosh is going to continue sneaking. He's going to find the gold, and Tears it just does not expect that. Like, why would this ever be here? He just cleared up Kabosh's army, and Kabosh is already here with four archers. He's going to get one fill, maybe even a second. This is such a weird play from Kabosh, but I think it's a really good one, considering like how weird it is. Tears would never expect it. And there you go. Two fills down, house being forced to get deleted. Luckily, we got Kimmer houses here, so... Uh, the damage should be more or less mediated here. Uh, but actually, like, the archers are doing a lot of damage. Scout goes down. Another archer goes down. Oh, boy. Kapo How is Kapoch up to Castle Age? Behind this, Kapoch is up to Castle Age. He used the market to sell the stone? This is ridiculous. Wow, what a great play from Kapoch. A lot of pressure. Forces Thurs to stay at home and then just turbos the Castle Age. And in Castle, he wants to go Eagles. So that's why he doesn't care about the archers. That's ridiculously good. Wow. I am impressed by Kabach here. Terrors has a window here, though. Terrors has a window where he has a lot more army. Let's see what Terrors can do. He's already here with some scouts. Forcing another barracks from Kabach. And now it's going to be three barracks, Kabach, eagle play. Uh, Terrors is kind of like full feudal. Oh, man. The selling stone into fast up is a really smart option. Like, how did he even manage to go up this fast? Crazy, crazy build from Kapoch. Now we're seeing skirmishes coming forward. Thing is, the amount of skirms Tur's made, it feels like he almost has way too many of them. Like, he has like 10 skirms. He's actually still making skirms. Kind of interesting. He's still making them. Even though he sees the three barracks. So maybe a little bit of a mistake there. Tur's wants to fight. No bloodlines on the scouts, but he does have armor and attack. Castle Age, remember, it gives plus three attack to eagles. For free as well. I guess the scrums would be kind of nice against the spears, but that's about it. Eagle warrior attack coming in. Uh, Kapoch is going to be way stronger here. Way stronger. Monastery on the front as well. Yeah, this is a really good strat here. He just has to be a little bit cautious here. Kabach doesn't want to fight. Okay, I mean, these fights are going really well. I was going to say, Kabach might not want to fight before upgrades come in. But, I mean, fights like that, he'll take any day of the week. They're going really well. Now the upgrade's in. This gives them extra speed, more bonus damage with cavalry, extra HP. The Eagle Warrior attack is really good. Gets the job done. Now, Villager taking some harass, but I think he should live. The Eagles are just so strong. They're going to be clearing the Skirmishers, doing all kinds of damage. Those skirmishers were like more than useless as well. They didn't even kill a single vill. Is Terrace stuck in feudal? I think he is. He has so many farms though. Oh my god, 27 farms. On three stables. Getting bloodlines now. Listen, I'm all for like... I'm all for full feudal games. But there's a rule with full feudal. You have to be attacking. And you usually have to be like 15 pop up at least. And right now the population is even. And Terrace will have to be defending. And those are not the criteria you need for a winning full feudal play. So right now it's looking rather rough for Turs, especially against Meza with all in eagles or like heavy eagle play. It's not easy to stop this. Even in Castle Age, it's hard to stop this, let alone in Feudal Age. But I would like to see from Kapach. Oh, there's a hole, no way. Oh, good trap though. Not trap, but a good good wall off from Turs. He could trap actually if he can hop into house, but not gonna happen. Remember, this is match point, so I don't blame Turs for staying in it. But it's looking rough. The scouts are just not not enough versus those eagles. Turs is taking the fight anyway. He's got the hill bonus. Maybe he thinks it's the best it's going to get, but that is just not that good of a fight. Remember, e eagles are also cheaper than scouts. So even if the fight looks even decent for Turs, it still might not be the best. Yeah, take a look at that. Turs actually wins the fight, but still has to deal with more Eagles on top. Second town center now being added for Kapoch, so he's going to get double the Vill production. I don't know, maybe. Like, Turs is hanging on. He still has a lot of Khmer farms. There's still a chance. 
Especially with this marker, there's still a chance he somehow gets the castle edge. Eagle's killing another villager. Yeah, really strong eagle play there. Really, really strong eagle play. And GG well played. Good luck next week. It is called Turs says he's had enough. And uh, Kabach with a basically sweep minus one game. Takes four games back to back. All of them quite short. Kabach showing his domination. Let's get a GG well played in the chat here. Uh, really impressive last game here from Kabach though. Honestly, the eagle play was really good. He had full pressure with the archer sneak as well because he didn't care about the archers. He was always going to go for the eagles and castle. And he got such a fast castle time. I'm really curious as to how fast it was. That's nuts, dude. 19 minutes? 19 minutes after 3 spears forward and like 10 archers forward is crazy. GG well played. Well done. Well done, Kapash. He truly earned this one. Uh, but of course, we still have a few things to do. First of all, I want to say congratulations to Thurs. I think he came on here. He had a draft advantage. He still tried his best. And uh, he got at least one game away from Kapash. And that's not too bad. Considering how much of a heavy favorite Kapach was, that was not too bad. But I also want to say congratulations to specifically Kapach for winning despite having a draft disadvantage. Turris picked four of Kapach's sieves, and Kapach still managed to win 4 1, only dropping one game. Uh, really impressive performance from Kapach. We still have a couple of things for today before we end up the stream. We are going to be picking a, uh, a player for next week's uh, winner stays on. So whether it's next week or not, depending on if there's Warlords or not, we'll see. Uh, but there are 36 players in the sign-up sheet. So 1 to 36 uh, RNG. Let's take a look. All right. So I've got, uh, as you can see on display, this is the list of sign-ups here. It's a little bit small, but I'll zoom in a little bit. Take a look at who we've got here. Uh, again, it's Husiel. We've got Kapach. Uh, you got Doubt in there. you got Nili in there. Uh, you got Nikov, you got Dark, uh, you got Monos, you got Hart, a lot of big names. You got ACCM, you got Vinchester, so a lot of big names here. We're going to go ahead and set up the RNG, so 1 to 36. It's very simple. Next week's op opponent will be, will be picked right now. Uh, 1 to 36, whoever gets picked is next week's opponent for Kapach, who is now a three-week champion. The first one is nothing, just to show that it works. This doesn't count. The next one will be Kapach's opponent for next week. Let's take a look and generate. It's going to be number 9. Freaking Andy! Oh my goodness! And I don't even have to check if he's in the top 100. Freaking Andy is a top, top player. This is going to be Kapach's hardest challenge yet. And to make it spicy, Kapach will once again have a draft disadvantage. Even though Andy's the top level player, because Kapach is a three week champion, we are not going to make it easy on him. It's going to be Andy versus Kapach. Kapach having a draft disadvantage, a minor one, but still a disadvantage. And just in case Andy decides he doesn't want to show up or he's busy or whatnot, the backup player for the week will be 17. Turs, nope. 9, nope. 35. Backup player will be Say My Name, okay? Say My Name will be the backup player. He's also in the top 100, I believe. Uh, yeah, take a look. His uh, current rating is 2,300. Actually, it's worth checking, actually. Is he in the top 100? Hold on, hold on. And he should be good. Uh, I don't see him, actually. I don't see him. Say my name is not top 100. Huh. He's actually not. Yeah, he's not top 100. Okay. Yeah, and he's here, number 24. So we're going to roll another one. Okay. We're going to roll another one. 17. Turs, how does Turs keep getting picked? What is this RNG? 29? Ubetnir? Is Ubetnir in there? This is just for the backup player anyway. This barely, barely matters. Ubetnir? I don't think he's in here, actually. Oh, he is. Okay, Ubetnir is the backup at rank 76. So Ubetnir, Ubetnir is in as the backup player, just in case. But for next week, it's going to be Kapach uh, versus, um, versus freaking Andy. Thank you so much for watching on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the Gamer Legion channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys next week with Kapoch versus freaking Andy. And winner stays on. Let's see if Kapoch can go four in a row or will he bow out to freaking Andy taking the throne. GG well played. Thanks for watching.